Hi everybody, welcome back to the Feynman Technique. Today I've got a good integral here for you. Um, the integral from 0 to infinity of the natural log of 1 plus 4 sine squared x dx. And we will be using Feynman's technique to solve this. So what we'll, we'll start off by creating a function of t as an integral. That's the integral from 0 to pi over 2. Here we are, I tell a little bit better. Pi over 2 of the natural log of 1 plus, you guessed it, t sine squared x dx, noting that f of 0 equals 0, and f of 4 is equal to our original integral. If you plug in 4, you just get back the original integral. If you plug in 0, you get natural log 1 in the integrand, so the whole thing evaluates to 0. All right, so now we take the derivative of our f of t by taking the partial with respect to t of the integrand right there. So that's going to give us f prime of t being equal to the integral from 0 to pi over 2. Of That's going to give us sine squared x over 1 plus t sine squared x dx. Now that's not a trivial integral to evaluate. Um, there's two tricks. The, the trick that would come to most people's mind would be the Weierstrauss substitution. But I'm not going to use that. I'm going to use a different method. Um, I'm going to let x equal the arc tangent. Some people use tangent inverse. I use arc tangent. I, I just think it's a little bit more clear. Arc tangent of u which implies that dx is equal to 1 over u squared plus 1 du. All right. Well, how's that going to help us with our sine squared x's that we have? Well, I hope you would agree with this. Let's just draw a little triangle here. And let's say that our... Um, well, we already have that x is equal to arctangent u, so we'll just call our angle x. Now, don't forget that x is arctangent u. I hope that you would agree that the tangent of arctangent u would be 1. So the tangent of this angle has to be 1. I'm sorry, u. The tangent of the arctangent of u has to be u. So the tangent of this angle must be u. That'll give us u. Opposite over adjacent, that's u. That gives us our remaining side being the square root of u squared plus 1. So, we're not interested in um, the tangent of uh, arctangent of u. We want the sine of arctangent of u, right? Okay, well, the sine of arctangent u, because arctangent u is x, is the sine of this angle the opposite over the adjacent. So the sine of this angle x, or arctangent u, is u over the square root of u squared plus 1, meaning that sine squared x, or sine squared arctangent u, is equal to u squared over u squared plus 1, right? This side squared over this side squared. So that's it. That's our sine squared of x. So we can use that in our substitution. All right. So let's go ahead and rewrite our f prime of t using that substitution. All right. So we have the integral going from, let's see, if x is 0, arctangent of what is 0? Arctangent of 0 is 0. x is pi over 2. Arctangent of what is pi over 2? Uh, that would be infinity. Okay. Yeah. Yes, that's right. Okay. Now, let's just plug in our substitution. So sine squared x is u squared over u squared plus 1 over 1 plus t times u squared over u squared plus 1 times dx, which is 
times 1 over u squared plus 1 du. All right. Now let's distribute this u squared plus 1 into our denominator here. Okay, so if we do that, this 1, and I'm going to use parentheses, this 1 is going to become a u squared plus 1. Close the parentheses there. And this u squared plus 1 will simply cancel with this u squared plus 1. So... I'll rewrite this as t u squared. And this cancels out. Put our du a little bit closer here. And then we'll bring this u squared plus 1 down. Well, no. Let's actually now let's get rid of the parentheses. Okay. And let's bring this plus one over here put a parentheses around here and factor out a u squared i know it's getting a little cramped but i'll rewrite it at the end so we factored out a u squared this gives us a one and this gives us a t all right so we have one plus t u squared and then all of that plus 1. And now let's go ahead and put a parentheses around this. Bring this a little bit closer. Close the second set of parentheses. And bring this u squared plus 1 down to the bottom. So we have u squared u squared plus 1. Okay, from here, um, I don't believe any of you would have a... Pr it's still not nice, um, but we can use partial fractions on this. Notice that 1 plus t is simply a constant, and we can use partial fractions on that easily enough um, to, to obtain... Um, two separate integrals that we should be able to evaluate fairly easily. Um, and, the, and then we would, of course, have to plug in the bounds. Um, but I'm going to skip that because, like I said, from here, I'll just give you, the, uh, I'll give you the rundown of the process. You use partial fraction decomposition on this, um, noting that 1 plus t is simply a constant. So, using partial fraction decomposition, you'll get two separate integrals. Um, and when you evaluate those integrals, the final result is going to give you this. You're going to get pi over 2t minus 1 over t. Uh, hold on one second. Um minus, you know, I'm going to rewrite this like this. Um, you're going to get pi over 2 times 1 over t minus pi over 2 times 1 over t square root of t plus 1. Okay. So that is our f prime of t. Again, like I said, it's not it's not trivial to evaluate this integral, but it's this integral's in a spot where I think most people would be able to handle it and are really not interested in seeing how I solve that. That's just a bunch of busy work, and this is what you get. Okay. So that means that f of t is equal to the integral of all this. So that's going to be pi over 2 times the integral of 1 over t dt minus pi over 2 times the integral of 1 over t times the square root of t plus 1 dt. Okay, now this one I'm just going to erase and write 
um, pi over two natural log t because we, we all know how we all know how to evaluate that integral. So that's pi over two natural log t. Okay, how are we going to solve this integral? Well. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to let um, t equal, uh, no, let's let t equal tangent squared theta. And the motivation for that is that um, If we let t equal tangent squared theta, we'll have a square root of tangent squared theta plus 1, which is just secant theta. And that would get rid of our, our square root. And there won't be any other square roots left when we perform this substitution. That means dt is equal to 2 tangent squared theta secant squared theta d theta. Bring down the 2. Oh, no, that's wrong. That's just 2 tangent theta, secant squared theta, d theta. Okay. So, um, let's use that substitution. So, f of t is equal to pi over 2 natural log t minus pi over 2 times the integral of 1 over, let's see, t is tangent squared theta square root of tangent squared theta plus one is just secant theta and then our dt is two which i will use to cancel out this two tangent theta, which I will just get rid of that squared there, secant squared theta, which will get rid of this, and we'll be left with 1 secant theta d theta. Okay. Now um, we can multiply the top and the bottom of this by cosine theta, giving us 1 over sine theta or cosecant theta. All right. So we all know what the integral of cosecant of oh, cosecant theta is. What am I doing? Hold on. There we go. Cosecant theta. We all know that that is negative natural log cosecant theta plus cotangent theta. All right. Plus C, of course. So I'm going to go ahead and erase this. That negative sign will cancel this negative sign. So that's natural log of cosecant theta plus cotangent theta plus c. All right. Well, uh, let's see. We want Let's get theta in terms of t here. So tangent theta is equal to the square root of t. So I'll just put a square root sign over that t. That means arctangent square root of t is mm, no. Let's uh I'm sorry. Okay, so now we have tangent theta e is equal to the square root of t. So let's go ahead 
and draw a triangle such that the tangent of it is the square root of t. So that's going to give us the square root of t plus 1. Now, cosecant, that is the uh, reciprocal of sine. So we're going to get square root of t, uh, square root of t plus one over the square root of t. So square root of t plus one over square root of t. All right, cotangent is the square root of uh, that's one over the square root of t. All right? Yes. So I'll just write that as plus 1. Close the parentheses a little bit early. And bring that plus C over here. Okay, great. So now we need to solve for our constant uh, C. Well, we know that F of 0 is equal to zero right f of zero is equal to zero but we have a small problem here um we have a square root of t right here and if we plug in zero there that's no good because we'll end up with the natural log of two over zero and that's well that's not defined really call it infinity but that doesn't really do us any good so we're going to just do a little trick here um since we have a pi over two times the natural log of something here let's make let's force this to be a pi over two uh right here now by doing that we need to multiply by two but instead of multiplying by two what i'd like to do is just square is just uh square the inside so I'll put a parentheses around there, and we'll square it. And squaring this, we'll just um, we'll just get rid of that square root. And now you can see that we uh, and also let's do this. Let's go ahead and factor out a pi over two from here. All right, there we go. Now. You'll notice that this is just the natural log of this top part minus the natural log of uh, the bottom part, which is natural log t. So this and this nicely cancel out. There we go. So that's what we have. So I'm going to rewrite that a little bit nicer. Uh, we have our f of t is really equal to pi over 2 times the natural log of the square root of t plus 1. Close that square root there. Not t1 plus, how about t plus 1? Plus 1 squared. Close the other parentheses and plus c. Now, let's see. We know that f of 0 is equal to 0. So, we say that 0 is equal to this thing evaluated at the point t is equal to 0. So, we have 0 is equal to pi over 2 times the natural log of, let's see, if t is 0, square root of 1 is 1, 1 plus 1 is 2, 2 squared is 4. Natural log 4 plus c, implying that c is equal to negative pi natural log 4 over 2. Right? Yeah, that's right. Okay. So, 
let's replace our c with minus pi natural log 4 over 2. So minus pi natural log 4 over 2. All right. And then I'm going to just get rid of this stuff. So now we have a function of, we have f of t expressed purely in terms of t with no constants. With, there's no mystery here. Now all we do literally is plug in 4 for t and we have i. Because remember, f of 4 is equal to our original integral. Well, this is f, so if we plug in 4, we get i. All right, that means that i is equal to pi over 2 times the natural log of, let's see, square root of 5 plus 1 all squared, square root of 5 plus 1, and then all of that squared. But instead of squaring it, what I'd like to do is just bring out that 2 have it canceled that too right there. So we have pi times the natural log of the square root of 5 plus 1 minus pi over 2 times the natural log of. And you might be able to do a little bit better than that but I think that's good enough. Well, actually, we can do a little bit better. Let's, let's recognize that 4 is 2 squared. And we'll bring out that 2 to cancel this. So we just have uh, pi natural log 2. Um, and then we have a common factor of pi here. So we could just write this as pi times the natural log of the square root of 5 plus 1 over 2, I believe. And actually, that's pretty cool because the square root of 5 plus 1 over 2 happens to be the golden ratio. So that's a really nice answer um, for our integral. Um, this integral right here, the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of the natural log of 1 plus 4 sine squared x dx is equal to pi times the natural log of the golden ratio. That's, uh, that's pretty interesting. Well, anyway, guys, uh, that's the video. I hope you enjoyed that, and we'll see you next time.